Good morning. Today we celebrate the fifth Sunday of Lent. When I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. We welcome everyone to our celebration of the Eucharist and encourage everyone to remain with us following Holy Communion to receive the blessing which concludes the Mass. Our celebrant for today's Mass is Monsignor Stephen. Please stand. Please join in singing our opening hymn, number 155, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross, number 155. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and our need for God's mercy as we enter into these mysteries of our salvation. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. By your help we beseech you, Lord our God, may we walk eagerly in that same charity with which out of love for the world your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers, the day I took them by the hand to lead them forth from the land of Egypt. For they broke my covenant, and I had to show myself their master, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer will they have need to teach their friends and relatives how to know the Lord. All, from least to greatest, shall know me, says the Lord. For I will forgive their evil doing and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the letter to the Hebrews. In the days when Christ Jesus was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered, and when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Some Greeks who had come to worship at the Passover feast came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you. Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. 
I am troubled now. Yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd there heard it and said it was thunder, but others said an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. Now is the time of judgment on this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this indicating the kind of death he would die. The Gospel of the Lord. We are fast approaching the end of Lent. Next Sunday we begin Holy Week. Holy Week when we walk with the Lord. We journey with him through his passion, his death, and his resurrection. And the readings today kind of point us in that direction. The Gospel reading is not filled with really comforting words. You know the expression, you can attract more flies with honey than you can with vinegar. Well, if Jesus was looking for people to follow him, he didn't ever hear that expression. He says things like, Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. He says, whoever loves his life loses it. And whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Those are not really comforting words. Those are not really words that we kind of want to hear when we come to church. We want words that comfort us, that give us some peace. Those are not those words. But those words are important because that is what being a Christian is really all about. As we enter into Holy Week next week and as we prepare ourselves this week to do so, we know that we are going to be entering into a week filled with liturgies, filled with prayers that make us concentrate, that have us meditate on those most important events in the life of Jesus. His passion, his death, and ultimately his resurrection. And why are those the most important days that we have? Because those are the days in which Jesus accomplishes our salvation. You see, in a certain way, he's talking about himself. Unless that grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. The death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And when we enter into Holy Week to celebrate those events, we're not just remembering what Jesus did. We're not just remembering what happened to Jesus. We are recalling in a very powerful way what that death and resurrection mean for us. Because when Jesus uses these words in today's Gospel, he is talking about not just himself, but us as well. You see, we are united to Christ. And so his death and resurrection is our death and resurrection. How is that possible? Because we're united to him by baptism. In baptism, we die to our old self and we rise to a new life. That new life is the life that God puts in us 
pours into us at baptism. And then we live out our Christian life trying to be everything that God has called us to be. Trying to live out our lives following the gospel. Letting Jesus into our lives completely and totally so that our lives become a reflection of him. That, my brothers and sisters, is how we die to our old life and live in that new life of Christ. Now, dying, losing our life in this world, it's not as bad as it sounds. Jesus is not telling us to hate our life. We are called to love our life. Our life is a gift from God. That's why we're called to live out our lives completely and totally the way God created us to be, the way God wants us to be. But to lose our life in this world means putting aside all of the things that don't belong to God. All of the things in our life that are not of Jesus. We're called to die to those things. To put them out of our lives so that we can live for Jesus. Live as Jesus wants us to live. So what are those things that we can put aside in our lives? Every one of us has to answer that question for him or herself. Sin, bad habits, ego, jealousy, hatred, whatever it is. All of the things that keep us from God. We're called to die to that so that we can live. And you know, in that way, we really do unite ourselves to Jesus in his death and resurrection. And we celebrate that death and resurrection every time we celebrate the Eucharist. This is the presentation to us, here and now, of the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. And we receive Holy Communion. We receive Jesus himself living, alive, the risen Lord, present to us. So we are about to enter into these most sacred mysteries. The sacred mysteries of our salvation. Let's recommit ourselves today in this last week of Lent as we prepare to enter into this most holy of times. To die to our old self so that we can rise to a new life with Jesus and reflect that life of Jesus to everyone we meet. My friends, let us now profess what we believe. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now bring our prayers before the one who intercedes for us as our great high priest. For all those who preach the gospel, may they be instruments of God's grace and beacons of his love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those in civil governance will dedicate themselves to justice, peace, authentic freedom, and the generous defense of the poor. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That this season of Lent will be a time of deeper conversion for all the faithful. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who advocate on behalf of the poor, immigrants, refugees, women, children, and the victims of human trafficking, may they see compassionate justice on behalf of the most vulnerable. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the doctors, nurses, and first responders who dedicate themselves to caring for the sick and those most at risk in society, may they find comfort and inspiration in Christ the healer. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all families, may they be a reflection of God's love for the human family. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they celebrate everlasting life in Christ Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Maria and Franciszek Bishek, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, hear our prayers and those we hold in our hearts as we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join in singing our offertory hymn, What Wondrous Love Is This? Number 478.
pray now, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Hear us, Almighty God, in having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church 
and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Pancras, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Nicholas, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. It's a reminder that uh, there is someone in the back of the church willing to be there to help you with the uh, Easter fundraiser for information, or if you'd like to participate in the fundraiser, there's information back in the vestibule of the church as you leave today. Also, this Thursday, the 25th of March, we will have a mission, a, a retreat evening in Spanish. So if you speak or understand Spanish and would like to join us on Thursday evening, uh, you are very welcome. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Please join in singing our recessional hymn, number 474, There's a Wideness in God's Mercy, number 474.